Today we will briefly go over the ulmen and near classifications for clavicle fractures as these two are good to at least be familiar with come rotations. Starting with the ulmen classification, this one divides the clavicle into thirds. Group 1 includes fractures to the middle third of the clavicle, which 80% of clavicle fractures fall into ulmen group 1. Group 2 involves a fracture to the distal third, which accounts for about 15% of clavicle fractures, and group 3 involves fractures to the proximal third, which is the last 5%. There are further types within the groups, so feel free to pause the video to review, however I just want to go over the level of depth that might be expected from a medical student. Now the near classification simply delves a bit deeper into the Ullman group 2 fractures. The near classification has five types. Type 1 involves a fracture lateral to the coracal clavicular ligaments and thus is typically minimally displaced. Type 2 is split into A and B. 2A is a fracture medial to the coracal clavicular ligaments, and 2B is between the ligaments. Type 2 fractures are typically displaced and thus unstable. And just to review those ligaments, these include the conoid and trapezoid ligaments seen here. Note the conoid is medial and that 2B typically involves a conoid ligament rupture. Type 3 is a fracture that extends into the acromioclavicular or AC joint and is lateral to the coracal clavicular ligaments. Type 4 is only seen in the pediatric population and involves a physeal fracture. And lastly, type 5 is a comminuted fracture. And notice a trend here. If the fracture is medial to the ligaments or is involving the ligaments, it is typically going to be an unstable fracture for the near classification. Alrighty, feel free to read up more on these two classifications, but hopefully what I provided here should be good enough for you to be ready on rotation.